I've been doing this show, Kid in a Candy Store, on the Food Network, which is basically about um, me, a 32-year-old kid, basically, as I talk about my love of comic books, you know that that's true. Um, we travel around the country and we check out different sweets, candies, confections, baked goods, ice creams, brownies, pops, puddings, parfaits, you know, you name it. Uh, we're eating it in the sweet desserts world. And uh, we just found out we're going to be doing 13 more episodes of that. So, uh, no sweet till Brooklyn, I guess. Coming at you live in high fidelity. Hello? Hey, man. Yeah, how's it going? It's going good. This will work out just fine. We're talking to none other than Adam Gertler, known as Kitchen Man to me, for numerous reasons. Kitchen Man, how you doing? Hello. How you doing? Good, good. I am, you know, unfortunately, I'm not known as Kitchen Man in more circles, which is kind of funny because um, in the circles that I am known in, it has to do with kitchens in some way. Um, but uh, But I've always liked that moniker, and as you know, I'm also a very big comic book fan, and so I like the, you know, we know that's really where that comes from, you know, adding man to the end of anything is a such a classic comic book thing, and I know you and I are both very into that, so. We're actually, yes, yeah, huge that. fans. And, you know, the reason I actually called you today was, there's, um, besides your cooking and your acting and your performing and your, you know, everyday kitchen manning, uh, you have a deep... I would say pretty deep admiration and love for music. Uh, I would I would agree with that. I would certainly agree with the fact that uh, music is a huge part of my life. It has been for for quite some time. You know. Um, so. Um, now, what did you uh, grow up listening to? You you grew up out in, uh, in Long Island in New York. What was the name of the town? I did. I grew up in Long Island. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of show tunes for me, uh, growing up as a young thespian. Uh, no, I couldn't really stand show tunes as a kid. You know, I don't really think I really got into me appreciating music until probably like, you know, maybe it was like my, uh, sophomore year of, uh, high school or maybe freshman year. I think my friend Andy Bear listened to a lot of Grateful Dead. And I couldn't stand it for the longest time. And then at some point, it sort of clicked, as does often happen with, like the Grateful Dead, and that um, you just you ask for your first mixtape, you know, and then the rest kind of becomes history, and then you're going to shows. The next thing you know, you've gone to 17 shows within a period of two years, and, and and the music is one thing, but it's also this very specific social sect that you're a part of, you know. Even though you know me in high school is still 25 to, to you know 25 years too late to catch on to the real Grateful Dead thing, but still catching a piece of it. And it's a, it's a social thing as well. Is uh, you mentioned something about, uh, specific there, the mixtape. Is the mixtape extinct today, in in your opinion, and or, or or is there a substitution now for something like that? Well, I remember uh, one of my biggest influences in life in general, and my love of all things, you know, music, particularly Matt Kornfeld. He, uh, he used to make these tapes. He's classic cornfold mixes. I mean, he was the guy. He was the tape master. He could tell you every, you know, obscure vinyl from all over the place. Dude, was a little bit, he's a little bit older than me, and he's just, you know, been a sort of mentor character for a long time. So that's how I define the mixtape. It's something not really that I would, like, make for a girlfriend or get from a girl, although I've had a couple of those. I've had some, some good ones of those from some great girls. Um... Uh, some of whom I even actually got to see naked at some point, which, you know, was huge for me, you know, in, in high school. Um, but uh, so, you know, today I don't know what really replaces the mixtape uh, and the potential nudity that comes with that, you know. I don't so know. is this, would you say then that, that you're coming to, in, I guess, into music and being a fan or just being swept away into this, I guess, uh, for lack of a better term, scene, was was that... I mean, that was predicated upon the mixtape? Uh, oh, I, I think absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, the, the mixtape, you know, uh, whether it was, you know, your first couple of obscure Zappa tunes, 
um, that you would hear, and you'd be like, what is this guy singing about a mug shark and a mud shark arpeggio? And it's so weird, and it comes in, and, and you just have all the time in the world to think about that. Yeah, um, you know, for me, you know, it, it certainly was indicative of, of, of the scene, the mixtape. Um, it was like your your little group with your friends, your little fraternity, you know, the songs that tie you together with your group of friends when you're growing up. You know, being able to share that music, it's, it's how a lot of people share sports, you know, statistics. People walk around and talk about, oh, you know, I can't believe A-Rod hit that out of the park. What the hell? The Yankees, they suck. You know, my dad will watch the Yankees and just just, just tear into him. He loves to, but he's been a fan for, you know, you know his whole life, you know. Um, people find different ways to uh, interact socially, you know, and I think the mixtape is a real social thing. So, you know, Grateful Dead-wise, you're talking about pretty much one of the world-class, uh, legendary, uh, you know, myth-busting team-ups of the, of the millennium, or some would say even, you know, ever. And and how how many phases with with I guess the dead did you go through? Are you still going through phases with them, or have they faded into to a, a bigger glossary of yours or category of music that you're listening to now? Uh, they definitely have have faded back, but are still very heavily in the playlist. You know, like if you were to look at what's on my iPod and the kind of things I listen to. Every time, like, some Grateful Dead comes up, it still feels very special and very personal because of the social thing that, that you went through. Um, but I'm still somewhat of a part of it. You know, I went on and I followed, like, you know, the jam band Mo, you know, which was like a sort of, like, the, his, you know, the less popular fish jam band-y kind of thing, you know. But it was, again, it was something that we felt a part of. Like, we went and saw these Mo shows and we had ownership of that. So that was born out of Grateful Dead, certainly. Um, and another thing about the dead that I like besides, you know, the music, it's so weird how it's such a lightning rod band for music. Some people just can't stand it. And, you know, other people really get into, you know, there's, cause there's elements of country and bluegrass and, and obviously jazz. And, but I really love the story songs, you know, a lot of those kind of country songs. I like theater, you know, I like the theater that's expressed through some of their music, the characters. You know, what's what's an example? Uh, what's an example of one that that sticks okay. out? A great example would be uh, like the Jerry Garcia ballad "Wharf Rat," where it's about this guy who's down and out on his luck, Argus West, who lost a woman, and he's he's out of prison now, and he's you know he's pissed his life away, but he has another chance. And the way the song sort of is so tugs at your heartstrings, the way Jerry sings it, and that really you know reedy, almost weeping voice, and as his guitar solo sort of builds to this crescendo that's drawn out and drawn out and really makes you wait till it builds, and it's boom, 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 boom. I'll get up and fly away, fly away, you know, and the, and the way that they would, you know, hold on tension and, and pull back really made you feel something, and not in the way that dance pop disco beat music kind of does, which is a totally different scene, you know, and I think that's what turns people off to it, to that kind of music, is that it's not, it doesn't have this sort of programmed pop beat repetition thing that I can make it and make great dance music out of, and I don't want to take anything away from dance music, because, you know, people that dance are, I mean, you know, that's beyond impressive, it's not what I kind of look for in music, you know, um, I'm looking for or it doesn't always have to be easy, you know. It doesn't always have to sound pretty. Like Tom Waits, people would say it doesn't sound pretty, but man, does that music move me. It's like you listen to Tom Waits and it's you've got your own soundtrack. You know, you're in any scene, you're in this steam pipe alley with, um, you know, black uh, dust and smelling the garbage and the neon light flickering in the back alley from film noir movie or anywhere else. It so transports you, you know. So for me, uh, that's that's a lot of what I go for, is stuff that's got something special or dramatic to it. Now, for those of the uh, people listening uh, might recognize your voice. They would probably recognize you from the picture that we're going to put up here. But uh, you also spend a lot of your time acting in front of the camera. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. A lot of time in front of the camera. Uh, doing a lot of eating, actually. <laughs> 